you, Madam De Deputy Speaker, and may I warmly congratulate you on taking up your position and also warmly welcome the Secretary of State and her ministerial team on taking up their positions too. And I would like to express my deepest condolences to the Honourable Member for Montgomery and Gwendor for your loss. Madam Deputy Speaker, I would like to also uh, congratulate the Honourable Member for Birmingham, Sally Oak, for his very sobering and powerful words and indeed the speeches of my colleagues across the House uh, in this chamber today. I want to start by thanking my family for their love and forbearance in recent months, <laughs> my, my Labour and other friends for their support, and the people of Rugby and the Villages for giving me the honour of representing my constituency, my home for the last 17 years. Yeah. And as the MP representing the only seat with a sport named after it, <laughs> I, I, I hope the House will indulge me the occasional rugby analogy. <laughs> the rugby ball has been passed to me, uh, and notwithstanding a couple of minor mauls uh, during the election campaign, which I overcame, I want to pay first tribute to Mark Pawsey, my predecessor, who ran with the ball, literally and metaphorically, as a member of the Commons and Lords rugby team. Mark is an honourable and decent and kind man who served this House with distinction, worked tirelessly for his constituents and promoted the game of rugby internationally. I'd like to also put on record my respect for the former Labour member, Andy King, whose distinguished service continues to inspire me. Rugby is a market town that has grown rapidly in recent years. Uh, surrounded by many small villages, too numerous to mention one by one, set in the beautiful Warwickshire countryside, uh, and indeed to the north of the constituency is Bulkington, some say one of the largest villages in England, although the Right Honourable Member for Kingston upon Hull North and Cottingham <laughs> may disagree. <laughs> Rugby's population ballooned when the Oxford Canal was constructed in the 1770s, the railway hastened industrialisation, and might I say, Madam Deputy Speaker, to any front benchers listening, that being on the West Coast Main Line can very much hasten any ministerial visits that they <laughs> may or may not want to make. Come and see us too. No, 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 stop at rugby. Um, the, 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 confluence, the confluence of the M1, M6 and M45 near rugby places us firmly in the logistics golden triangle. And notwithstanding this logistical good fortune, though, rugby's potential lies primarily with its people. We have been and are still blessed by people who innovate, challenge norms and think creatively. Take sport. A plaque at Rugby School records that in 1823, the legendary local schoolboy, William Webb Ellis, and I quote, with a fine disregard for the rules of football, took the ball in his arms and ran with it. <laughs> and while my connection with the game of rugby as a player was, I confess, somewhat underwhelming, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that my dad, who is in the gallery today, played for England as a schoolboy. Yeah. 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 I won't join the House rugby team, therefore. But but I might join a reformed House rock band. Um, and, and I'm acutely aware of how dangerous such statements can be, <laughs> given that yesterday I wandered innocently into an APPG meeting and wandered out slightly bewildered as vice chair. <laughs> And as a classically trained violinist, violinist and semi-retired rock musician, uh, I, I'm glad to represent a constituency filled to the brim with talented people, and I will bang the drum for them and strum a chord for them. Yeah. Rugby was the birthplace of the poet Rupert Brooke, whose words that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England epitomise a quiet, contemplative English patriotism. We've spawned famous rock bands and musicians from Spacemen 3 to James Morrison. The creative arts scene is thriving. Fantastic local bands of all genres and orchestra, dance schools, rugby theatre for amateur dramatics, galleries and much, much more. The sporting scene is vibrant, 
with several rugby football and football teams and a plethora of clubs in the town and villages which selfless volunteers offer pretty much every sport to the community through. Rugby also has a proud record, track record of technological innovation. And for honourable and honourable members, as you get on a jet plane after uh, this session, <laughs> think of rugby. For the prototype of the first jet engine was built by Sir Frank Whittle at the British Thompson Houston Works in the town in uh, 1937. And at the same site, a decade later, a young Hungarian refugee, Dennis Gabor, invented holography. And I live in hope that holographic technology advances so far one day that MPs can be beamed into multiple locations <laughs> to insist with our busy diaries. <laughs> Until recently, dozens of giant masts formed part of the world's most powerful radio transmitter. And in 1927, the site was instrumental in the first transatlantic telephone call. I believe in maintaining the strongest possible transatlantic alliance. So I'm proud that rugby played its part in deepening the ties between our two great nations. The pi this pioneering industrial and scientific prowess persists. GE Venova today builds world-leading advanced generators, including for Royal Naval vessels. At Anstey Park, we have the Manufacturing Technology Centre, the MTC, the London Electric Vehicle Company that many of us newbies may have been moved around in in recent days, the electric cabs, and Fanuc UK. When I visited the, M the MTC recently with my right honourable friend, the Deputy Prime Minister, and the West Midlands Mayor, what struck me was that in order to unleash potential, what is needed is partnership between business, the education and skills sector, local and national government, trade unions, and much more. We met apprentices, beaming with pride at their achievements and in anticipation of a brighter future. We also need investment, most importantly in education. And I'm therefore delighted that the King's speech includes measures to raise standards in education, reform the apprenticeships levy, and establish Skills England. Having visited so many of our excellent state secondary schools and the brilliant local college, I am confident that the people of our area will do the modern day equivalent of inventing a sport, designing an engine, or writing an immortal poem. Rugby is a place that is at ease with itself. We are a very diverse town, and that is unequivocally a huge strength. We learn from one, one another, celebrate one another's traditions, break down barriers and focus on our common interests, something epitomised by the late Dr James Shearer, MBE, a mentor of mine who is sadly missed across the constituency. Our charitable sector is strong, and I'll take the liberty of mentioning two local charities that inspire me, the RJ Foundation that installs defibrillators, and back and forth men's mental health, an issue close to my heart. The churches, temples and faith groups are at the heart of our community. The street pastors, who I shadowed on a late night shift, show kindness in action. Kindness is a much underrated virtue. The people of rugby and the villages are compassionate. They warmly welcomed refugees from Ukraine, and I pay tribute to the thriving rugby Ukrainian community. It's Ukrainian members bravely forging their new lives away from home and all from the constituency who are helping them. The Ben Partnerships meet and eat on Fridays, catered for by recent immigrants who not only cook the food but are learning English there, shows our cohesion. And our community invests in our young people with the fabulous youth centres such as Hill Street and the Bradley Club. There are too many voluntary groups and organisations for me to mention. I simply salute you all. We thrive more when we work together and when the government is truly an enabler. I want to put on record my appreciation as, as a councillor of the work of council officers and all public servants in serving our community in difficult circumstances. I campaigned to become a Labour candidate using the phrase, together we can. I believe this is the only approach that will truly unleash the potential of the constituency. We now have a brilliantly led Labour council, a Labour MP, and a Labour government committed to 
empowering places with a strong vision. And I will do all I can to bring together people in this constituency, urban or rural, factory or farm worker, whatever their backgrounds, to tackle the problems we face, whether the lack of infrastructure, such as GP surgeries, the need for more services at the superb hospital of St Cross, insufficient affordable and social homes, town centre regeneration, or the need to make our streets safer. In doing this, I am inspired by the late, great Anne Cluid, for whom I worked, and the late, great Frank Field, with whom I worked. They showed us all what a backbench MP can achieve for their constituents, for the wider country, and in Anne's case, the wider world. And finally, back to rugby. In 2009, the World Rugby Member Unions identified integrity, passion, solidarity, discipline and respect as the defining characteristics of rugby. They're a good place to start as a new MP. I've caught the ball. I will now endeavour to dodge the occasional tackle, to make some progress forward on the pitch, score on those rare occasions when I can, but more importantly, to pass the ball on to others so that they can score, so that they can achieve their potential. Thank you.